This session is social media marketing. What is it, how it works, and why it matters. And uh, we're really lucky today to have two people who know a lot about it. I've been in meetings with them, and I just sit there and off, so that's a good thing. My paper is Director of Client Strategy for Lucidus Corp, based here in Key, and Jeff Wickham is the President of Communicators Group uh, in the Branding and Marketing Communication Agency, also housed here in Key. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce them. They can tell you a little bit more about their company, and then get into the program as to how to use social media marketing. So again, I bring them both up.
done one up there. Yeah, and there is a yeah. Okay, good. We're going to uh, give you a little bit of background on what is social media, why does it matter, what are some of the challenges, and how can you go overcome some of those, what are some of the rules to play by if you decide to get in. And then from 9.20 to 9.30, we'll take a first break. Now, because we're going to give you breaks, we'd like you to turn off those cell phones, if you would, please. Just a, a reminder if you forgot, because they can be distracting. And then when we come back from the break, we're going to do, Mike's going to take us through sort of best practices, tips, and tricks for what we think are the key channels. And there are a ton of them out there, guys, and we'll talk about that. But, but some of the tips and tricks and best practices so that you might consider how you might apply your, your uh, your brains. <coughs> um, we'll take another break. That'll that'll take a good hour, and we'll take another break, a shorter break this time. And then we're going to ask. Um, we ask. Uh, we'll have a short case study from a local business who is doing this. Uh, I think particularly well. We'll find out from her if there's a um, uh, if there's a uh, if there's truth to that. Uh, and then at the end, at the last hour or so, we've got a, a, an exercise for you to do first individually, and then as uh, small groups, and we'll ask you to share something. Okay, so that's our agenda for today. Mike, just the work for it, right? Yeah. Okay, so wanted uh, quick show, of, you know, quick show of hands. So, um, how many folks have an email address? <laughs> if, if I was to do that ten years ago, how many folks would have put their hands up? Fifteen years ago. Okay. Um, everyone has a website here for their business, I'm sure. Um, how about a, a Twitter account? Okay. Uh, a YouTube account? Um, let's see, uh, what else? There? Twitter, um, Facebook. Facebook account, obviously. We're going to talk about that. Okay. Um, LinkedIn account? Okay. Um, these things, one of the stories I was thinking about as a kid, getting ready today, that email, I, I came to the area, I grew up over Bowdoin, grew up next to, to Phil, I'll tell you an embarrassing story about me as a, uh, an eight-year-old uh, at the break if you want. Um, I do need a royalty fee though, Phil. Four-year-old Mike. Four <laughs> <laughs> um, he was big for his age. He was. But I, I, came into the, I came into the Keene area uh, in, in 90, in the 93-94 area. I was working at the Cheshire, Cheshire YMCA, uh, Camp Dakota, and um, Moved in there, we had the, the, the organization had two computers um, that only talked to each other, um, and email finally. When email finally came around for this for our organization, it was we had one computer that had one we had one email account for the um, for the organization, and it was one person's job to go and oh it's time to go check the email, and I'll check the email and I'll print out all the emails that came in and give them to the people around the office that need to see them, and they'll come to the computer and. Um, respond to them when they have, have the time. Um, and that was, so that's 90, when was that? That was 94, 95, 96, you know, probably 95, 96 time frame. And look how far we've come uh, with email now. I mean, if, if uh, Gmail goes down, we start getting hives around the office. It just, uh, we, we can't work without, without the email now. I think um, back then we probably didn't think we had time for email. Uh, we were all busy, we were doing our jobs, and we said, we don't, we don't have time for this new technology. But we found we found ways to do um, new things with uh, with the technology uh, over the last uh, few years. I think I think what you'll see is very similar stuff with this with the social media uh, sorts of stuff. Right now, it seems a little foreign, seems a little scary, uh, just like email did then to, uh, to many of us. So social media is not new, right? How many folks are in a Lions Club or Rotary Club, um, Chamber of Commerce, right? Um, all those things are networking, they're all social networking. All we're talking about today is online tools that um, allow this to happen in a more distributed way, a quicker way, um, perhaps a more media rich way. So again, you guys are all good at networking already. Your you're, you're business leaders are successful in, in what you do. Um, all you need to do is figure out some of the new tools to, to be able to do some of that stuff online. So it, I know it can be overwhelming for, for businesses and trying to keep on top of everything, but, but try to keep in your mind that this is, you know, this is not new stuff, um, just just new tools, the next the next thing down the, down the line. So we've got to do the, got to do the, the basic definition. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this. This is from, this is from Wiki, Wikipedia, which obviously is, um, we're not going to talk much about Wikipedia today, but it's a, it's a social tool, right? It's, it's an online uh, 
an encyclopedia that's uh, edited by millions of people around the world. This is the definition they use uh, to talk about what social media is. For me, these were the key parts. So it's about social, social interaction, uh, transforming conversations from, from one to many. I, I, do my, I do my monthly newsletter myself at my computer and send it out to all of you uh, to a many to many conversation of, of me and the people that like me and my brand, my company, get to talk to a lot of different people. Um, and I think the other key part is transforming from, from content consumers to content producers. So um, some of the things we'll talk about today, try to work in, um, is your changing role as just a producer, just a, a consumer of, of information, and how do you let your customers help you produce content that can further your business goals? Another way you may know of uh, social media is all these little things you see popping up all over the place: Bing, Dig, Facebook, Flickr, High Five, Last, all these, all these different things. You start to see them all over the web. Um, Again, one of those things that I think can be overwhelming for businesses. What we're going to do today is really just focus on on the three that the three biggies that we think are most important for all of you to know about, and some other uh, some other areas. So, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, blogging in general, and, and Flickr and photo sharing is the, the video there. Okay, so I gave you a little bit about definition. But who cares? Really? Well, why does it matter? And I'm here to say I think that these people care. This is why it matters. This is Jeff Bezos from Amazon, pretty successful online venture. A brand is what people say about you. You know, it's not a bad little definition for a brand because it is who you are, what you are. And what we're saying is that the room is just a heck of a lot bigger right now, folks. It's a heck of a lot bigger, but it's also a heck of a lot more, can be a heck of a lot more targeted than the old sort of rotary club ways. Those are still important because face-to-face is face-to-face. But it's, it's a bigger room and a more targeted room because people can get what they want to get and only what they want to get. So the, the, the control is the consumer, not the broadcaster. And, and, and of the top 15 most visited websites in the United States, eight are socially driven. And all 15 <coughs> use prominent social media. So these are the top 15 as of uh, about three months ago. And the red ones are complete social networks. And every one, other one has some sort of social media to it. That's where the traffic goes on the web. It, it, it absolutely is. Some quick facts. Who cares? Why should you care? 30 million business users and a half a million CEOs are connected on LinkedIn. They're not all using it right. Tom's one of those, probably. <laughs> but, but they're connected and they're there. 10 million users are sharing these little 140 character micro messages every day on Twitter. There are over 200 million people on Facebook. Actually, well, this is old. Yeah, it's, 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 it's actually up since we did this. It would be, the, I think it's actually the third largest country now. I should have updated that stuff. Um, this was through March 2009, it's going exponentially through there. And, the large, and this shows you the sort of light pink on the top is everybody. Male, the second one down. Female, the third one down. So it skews a little bit more female as we get older. But the large, the, this, is the, this is an audience growth. When you, the, you can see that. Look, the kids were already on there, so they're not growing at that, at that speed. But the, but this is the group that's growing the fastest right here. And if you look at, if you look at back in March 2009, and again, this has changed. And then, this is the makeup of who's growing. Because people say, yeah, that's the kids, that's the young kids. We, we'll get that later. But we all, we all also complain about the aging, especially in New Hampshire, the aging sort of population. How do we reach when you're? Uh, Community bank. I know. I work for a bunch of them. How do you reach the young people? Our old people with money are dying. What are we going to do? Well, for one thing, the young people are going to get old, but they're going to get old knowing how to use these tools. And for another thing, it's not just for young people anymore. This group, this has this has changed. It. This piece of pie is much bigger now, even, and this piece of pie is much bigger now. It is growing exponentially. Many folks have a parent on a parent on Facebook. Yeah. So, 
but folks How are many folks' kids won't friend them? <laughs> <laughs> even stodgy old McKinsey has really grabbed, I say even, they're really, they're really but they're stodgy. McKinsey had really realized the value of connecting with where people are. That's a Facebook page. They have different Twitter pages for different areas of their business. They have a YouTube channel. These are ways that they can keep connected with people who want to be connected to, to, to participate in the subjects in which the McKinsey is an expert. So it's a whole, so why should you care? You should care because it's a whole new world. You know, this is the traditional marketing funnel. You have uh, sort of awareness, and that can be driven in the past. I was advertising those broadcasts, and then people have to like, they become aware of you, and then they have to consider you. And they would only consider you if you had a really cool ad with a really compelling proposition that mattered to them. That still matters. I believe in advertising. I'd be cutting off my left foot if I, if I didn't say that. But it also, you know, the other way to gain awareness is virally on the web. You still need that compelling brand promise. Where people have always had problems is with engagement. You got to give your product away. You got to like, how do you got to discount it to nothing? How do you engage people? so that they will actually sort of feel part of whatever it is, the service of the product you're selling, and then be willing to buy. And actually, if you, not just purchase, but if you extend this down here, how do they become evangelists for your brand and tell other people? The real truth is, brands can scream and yell all they want. Come on over, we're really cool. But how do you know they're really going to hear? <coughs> or how they're going to Today we have so many options. We're inundated with information. There are all these books out about too many choices. How do we do it? What the web enables us to do is talk to each other. We learn to trust each other more than ever before. Do you ever buy anything any, any again that's any significant purchase without finding out about it first or hearing about it from someone else? I saw a statistic. It's not up here. That 22 percent of people say that they are influenced because of advertising. And the other, what's that, what's that, 70 to 78 percent say it's because they got, they got interested because somebody else told them or something else happened. And that something else is often the web, it could be traditional press, what have you. Here's, here's a, this is, this is a, wait, wait, what do you want here? This is a, I did this, I knew that the presentation was coming up, so I wanted to, I wanted to test it up. So, uh, are the attendant folks here today? Yeah. So uh, Ken Colby down at Key Honda uh, uh, helped me out uh, recently. To, to, to went to one, one car, he took our, our Honda that was coming off lease and, and figured out a way to get my Jetta in there. Um, so I put this up on, on my Facebook, um, giving them some kudos, right? Um, you know, give them a shout out if they're looking for a car. Um, so I have, I don't know, I don't know. I think, I don't know. 200 friends uh, or people that uh, think they're my friends. Yeah. Uh, um, so they all, in theory, they all saw this, right? So that this came up onto their, all their screens, so they now know about uh, Ken Colby, uh, Keen Honda, uh, Cardi, Cardi Fisher, Kristen Goodenough, his daughter, Ken's daughter, um, and Julie Cavanaugh, who another proud of her all uh, crony. Um, they all liked this. So when they liked it, when they said they liked this, all their friends saw a little note that said, uh, Kristen Goodenough likes Mike's status, so all of Kristen's friends may have now said, what, what did Kristen like about Mike's status? And now he sees this. And uh, Rob, Rob Mitchell, a guy, guy here in Keene, uh, weighed in with a comment about, uh, about Camden and the Honda as well. So this is, a, this is the sort of stuff you're, you're trying to engender, trying to encourage the folks that interact with your companies and business to do. Right, and, and you know, that's weird for businesses to get their hands on. It's weird for me to get my hands on the answer. It really is. And I think you'll hear from our, our case studies, Deb Blair from the Not Enough Community Bank. Yeah, we'll talk to her later, but I think you'll, but it, you've got some challenges to overcome. If you don't own the thing and can do it all yourself, the challenge is maybe just internal, and you may have to convince a boss who may be older or whatever that this is worth investing some time in. But what happened is all these traditional bullhorn marketers that was the way since the Industrial Revolution for the last 100 plus years, they, we, we said people believed and bought and tried and either we either came through with our brand promise or not, but, but and then they talked to people and they, they always told people well, that's a bunch of bunk that restaurant's no good. Now they have way bigger bullhorns themselves. Suddenly, people are talking back. 
And at first, and even now, big brands don't know what to do. They were scared and shocked. And they said, it'll go away. It's a fad. It'll go away. But it isn't. So that the model, in just in marketing, and this is why my business has to change. It had to change. and has to change more and never stop changing because it's about interacting and listening. It's about marketers shouting to the masses. But then it's about those masses talking to each other and talking back to, and then that feedback coming back to the marketer. In theory, it's really cool because good marketing is find the product niche, meet it, and tell people you met it. Right? Isn't that it? This is a great way to do this. You know? It really, it really, really is. Um, it's a dialogue, or even better, it's really sort of a trial of or a quad log or something. I kind of come up with a better word. Um, look no further than a pretty new brand on the scene and how that brand got bought. I don't know what care what your political views are one way or the other. The stark reality is without an understanding of how this works, he's not our president. Um, he didn't just advertise on the web putting banners up. You know, this this movement of power by the web in many, many, many ways. Um, one of the things that the Obama campaign did uh, <clears throat> was hire this kid, Chris Hughes, 24 years old. Anybody know who Chris Hughes is? He was one of the co-founders of Facebook. They hired him to build, early on, Senator Obama hired this campaign, hired him to build the uh, uh, social infrastructure for the, for the campaign. You know, in most brands, 24-year-olds aren't allowed to talk in marketing. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they listen and absorb to the 30 <laughs> And this kid ran this thing and really got it off the board. Now, traditional media played a huge, don't kid, they played a huge part. And, and, but they played a huge part, and one of the big stories was the momentum that was gaining on the business, was building in the social network, right? And it's funny, um, I saw this, he, he took a leave of absence from Facebook. I actually got up really early or this week and turned on the TV and C-SPAN uh, was on. And he was giving a talk to the media about, about this whole thing. It was fascinating to me because he said when he first did it, he didn't have a clue. He had founded Facebook. He did not have, know how to do this. And they, and he told them he didn't know. And when I say they, he told the sort of the, the, the leadership of the campaign that he didn't know what he was going to do. And he said he's got one, he had one word that he put up that really helped. Because a lot of us don't know what to do and how to start this. He just said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start and I'm going to iterate. He put up a big slide that said iterate. And he said, you get on and the whole thing is you're not in charge of the message anyway. You react to the message, you refine it, you moderate it, but you let it be and you build and you listen to it. And then and, and it's really what the real brand is all about. So I, I thought that really compelling. It's a whole new world. I don't. I'm scared about putting my toe. I am about my own page. It's like should we put that portfolio piece up? Should we, you know, the power of that though is if it's not working well, you're going to hear about it. You can real talk more about the tone. Another, another quick just jump in the, the, the politics stuff. Um, well, I guess a little bit of a brag, but um, sort of realize the importance of social media and. Blogging and, and that sort of thing. That again, uh, regardless of your, of your political uh, uh, leanings, um, last year the, the DNC uh, invited one. They did a contest where all the political blogs in the state, uh, political blogs, could apply to um, be a credentialed blogger with the, the Democratic convention, um, and had an embedded blogger with each with each delegation had had a, a person. Uh, that was sitting there. They actually had. Um, uh, I was lucky enough to, to be. Able, I was, I'm associated with some folks here, and I was able to go. Um, and so I'm on the floor of the convention. They, they had a they had a laptop for us. They had an internet connection for us, and uh, we're trying to encourage additional stories coming out uh, from the convention of of delegates of, of the stuff that national media may not cover. So it's. Uh, I think they did did well to understand. Uh, the power of getting 50 more voices out there spreading news to their networks. Weren't you Twitter in from there? Uh, yeah, I put Twitter in there. I'm doing, I doing some video uh, 
video posts, uh, all sorts of things that are in there. I, I think you're going in this direction, but um, I'm sitting here a little bit, um, I'm, I'm impressed with the positive message that can just light a fire. Mm -hmm. What happens when there's a negative yeah. message out there? Don't hide it. Well, address that. Yeah. I will address that. Uh, we're jumping ahead on here. We are okay. going, we are going. <laughs> okay. I promise you I'll get to that. All right. Okay? That, that's a very important point. Very important point. I'll get it. We'll get there. Okay. I thought okay. you might. I just said, <laughs> what is it? Make sure you do. Okay. So it's a whole new world, and it's here to stay. Now, some of the, in fact, many of the vehicles that are out there, remember all of the things that got there, they're not all here to stay. But the, the way people connect with brands is here to stay and iterate, I guess. You know, today, more than ever, it's not going away. It's getting, I mean, your kid can get online with his PS3. Every, it's this whole world of interconnected devices that we have that we carry around. What it's probably doing, I mean, is getting smaller. I mean, this this thing is going to be on this thing in five years, in some form. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but you're going to have to deal with this as business owners. You're going to have to. You know, I'm going to deal with this. It's fun. It's good for your brand. It really is. It's good for your brand to, to, to react to and be what consumers want it to be. Um, it's not just about new tools, okay? It's about relationships. Relationships between people and relationships with products and services. And all the new tools are doing is giving us um, the giving us sort of easier ways and more targeted ways and louder voices if we need. Them. So why should you join the party? Here's some specific reasons I think that, that you should join join the party. Social media, whoops, went too fast. Social media can increase your awareness. It can build, depending on how you do it, it can build your reputation as a thought leader. If you are talking with an expert, because you are experts at what you do, I don't care where, what it is. You have expertise. You, it forces you to actually, when you tweet about things, when I tweet about branding on my Twitter feed, i got to go find stuff to talk about. So it makes me take the time to read. And I swear to God, I get smart. I get smarter putting this presentation together for sure. Mike, Mike and I were saying that the other day, the other day when we were going through this. Um, I particularly noticed him with you. I'm a softball guy. You're a baseball guy. Do leave that one. I mean, it also very definitely helps you build your search engine optimization rankings for your own websites. Um, to wit, search engines like social media. So search engines want to give people who use their search engine results that those people want. One way for them to prove that they want the result is that other people are talking about it, linking to it, you know. Um, so here's a search for uh, Zappos. Everybody know what Zappos is, right? I do anyway. But in here, and I did, I ordered these. We were all front page. They weren't in order like this. I ordered them. But, uh, you know, this is a, this is this is a Twitter feed about Zappos. This is a wiki page. That wiki, maybe that everybody knows what wiki is. Um, this is a corporate blog that Zappos puts out. This is Facebook, their Facebook page. And these other two things are smaller social networks that are sort of reviews about shoes that they bought in there. Google, Yahoo, big search engines, they like social media. It can help you drive people link to drive links to your uh, to your uh, own corporate page, where you can use the bullhorn, but probably also ought to do it. Yeah, shoes aren't important. The other thing, and this is the part I like, because I'm the RT parts type. It human it humanizes your brand. If you are, um, I'll pick on banks. If you're Bank of America, they have a billion dollars. Not a billion, but a bunch. Sorry, it humanizes your brand. If your Bank of America can make you feel local and real to those people, right? If you are an Adnock Community Bank, it can reinforce how different you are from those, you know, it, it lets your fans feel like they're really connected because you're the local bank. So whether, I don't care how big or small you are, it humanizes your brand. And it doesn't just sell product to people, but it encourages other people to sell product. By, by word of mouth. Um, lastly, 
as I said before, it helps you be a better company because you're giving your customers the fans, the people who want you. You're listening to them. You're not having to say, oh, it's time for us to update that study we did for $22,000 five years ago and, you know, we've got to come up with the 20 grand or something. It's daily feedback. We definitely have some feedback on how that's had that changed their business practices. So, I know it's hard. The shift from these one-way blasts can be difficult for businesses to get their hands around. You know, to join two-way conversations brand new channels that they've never played in before. But today, God, even even because this social media phenomenon is is in the news and people are thinking about it and talking about it so much, you've got to be seen as human to be trusted. Um, and companies, even big companies, can harness the power of social media. Importantly, when it comes to sort of speaking what your brand's about, gender trust, the real people be the company faces, not Johnson & Johnson, that tall building down there that's one of 20, the real people who are actually coming back. Mike, you had a story about it. Um, yeah, uh, um, uh, it's a sort of startup television, uh, tel telephone device called Uma. It's a IP-based telephone that run, runs on your, you don't have to pay, a you pay 200 bucks for this device, hook it up to your cable modem, and you don't pay a phone bill again. Um, so I got one uh, this past fall when we moved into Keene, uh, and was having trouble setting it up, so I, I twittered it. Uh, hmm, having trouble with the DNS settings for this thing. Um, not immediately, I fixed the problem on my own, but, but uh, not too much later, there was a, a tip came across from someone who said, try doing this. And I said, uh, yep, that's what I did, thanks for, thanks for this. It was the, turns out it was the CMO, Chief Marketing Officer for this company that has must have some sort of a. Uh, we'll show you a couple of tools that you can use to monitor things. But he has an alert set up that searches Twitter for his brand name. Came up. Chief Marketing Officer is answering my technical question about how, setting up his two hundred dollar. How much is that? Uh, that uh, you know, Heather Mapler at Clark Morton answered my question. Wow, I must be cool. not pretend you're the CEO if you're not. You should pretend you're the brand. You can't pretend anything on this. You, you, you can't pretend people will see through. That's that's sort of the point Sandy Bruce I'm gonna get to on, on the tone of what you can say and what you can't say. You do not do here. But what my our point here is that it puts even if you are the brand, even if you're logo pack guy, the logo pack guy in your then Somebody in Germany reading that, or somebody, you know, at Unilever who might be looking at buying one of your machines, and say, wow, this is this is they're talking directly back to me. It's it's it can't be getting a letter from 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 the CEO that isn't a form letter. It, it's the tone of it is real, and it'll be a back and forth. It's, it's very cool if you've had that experience. If you had that experience on the consumer side. You feel I like those guys, and all of a sudden you're a big fan, right? But for marketers, it's a lot. <laughs> it is. It, it's a lot. And, and that gets back to this guy, what, what this guy said, which is, you know, this is that Chris Hughes, he says, well, we get it, it's a lot. Simplify, you know? Pick the two. And Mike said earlier, we're going to focus on what we get the real key ones to try on. And what will happen is you'll learn in, through using the big three, let's just say, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and maybe there is industry blog that you should participate in that's relevant to your industry. It might be run by a trade publication or something. In fact, Elliot, this is a good one for you guys. In the packaging world, they have industry blogs. Um, so maybe those four things. You'll learn in talking to and reading them what if there's something else, the new next hottest thing that's coming up or something that's even more targeted. And then you'll say, yeah, that is important. We'll get involved. Just simply iterate. Try. And hopefully we'll give you today tools for trying. Now, yes, is this you? This is me. Um, right now, these are the most popular social media channels. Facebook, this was a, a survey of 400 and 
50 was done by Forrester, 452 businesses segmented by size, but it has a plus or minus uh, 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 sort of margin for error of four point something percent. So this is pretty reliable stuff here. That, that of those who are, are, are in the channel, 80% um, are using Facebook, 66 tweet. I think that has gone up since this was done six months ago. Uh, YouTube channels. Um, for those who have video content, Mike will get into the specifics of each of these, I think. LinkedIn, and then blogs, either industry blogs on third party sites or in their own, within their own websites. Um, what's this take to manage? Just uh, some statistics from that same study from the big brand. Starbucks is huge because Starbucks is the, was sort of one of the founders that really got into it. They're in 11 different channels. They you have six. YouTube, Twitter, right. Facebook, that stuff. They, they have six people full time working on it. It's a big company, six people. You can do it with one. You can do it with half. You can do it with. <laughs> Ten you minutes can, a you day. You can start yeah. with two hours a week. I'm going to commit to this. <laughs> um, Toyota, seven different channels, three staff. SAP Big Software Company, 10 different channels, 35 staff. I think they probably have very specific helpline things going on. Dell, same sort of deal. I did. They did not the study. Did not provide how many staff they had. It's probably a zero. <coughs> um, so what you need is a strategy. Okay, one that expands your reach, that extends your brand, and that empowers real voice, and real voice. And that means either the negative. So that might mean that you need first before you can figure out what that real voice is. You better know what your elevator speech is. That communicators group. You, got, you better be able to define your brand first with a compelling proposition that's going to be delivered consistently over time in your broadcast materials, on your website, in your interactions in social media. And so, you know, we call that here sort of, it's never, it's not the tagline, it's the Pledge of Allegiance for your brand, really, essentially. It's the thing that all your communications are measured against, and you sort of run it up the flagpole and salute it and say, does this reflect what our brand is all about? You really ought to be able to articulate that. The way we get to it is, and I would tell you this is one thing you should do about your businesses. Make a list of attributes, rational benefits, and emotional benefits. An attribute is something that either defines your business or makes it different. So, um, well, I think I have some examples in here. So, this was this MECF, is, is the Children's Healthcare Foundation in New York State. And one of the things that defines them is that there are 20, you probably can't read that, but it says they're a 25 year old not for profit agency. And that means there's a rational benefit to that, that there's an assurance of quality and stability that we treated a wide range of conditions many times over the years. There's an emotional benefit to that. <coughs> emotional benefit is how it makes people feel. <coughs> They've been around, so they get this experience, so I feel confident and I trust that they're going to be around in the future, too. Okay? So make a list of all these things. And put a rational, start with the, the, the attributes, put a rational benefit to each of them. Try to get it on one page. I say all these things, narrow it, to get it on one page. Rational benefit to each of them, and then emotional benefit to each of them. And a lot of them, you're going to see some themes. In this case, it's confidence, trust, reassurance, relief, security, inclusion, grateful, hopeful. It's that health care place. So that makes sense, right? Right. So then, out of that, that's going to lead you down to this position statement, this pledge of allegiance. And that format, that I use is this. You can't be all things to all people, by the way. It's this, and don't try to be all things to all people. I'll show you an example why in a second. Especially for these people who share these traits or desires. Brand X, that's you, is the, now you gotta give it a definition, a context, a definition. It's the insurance and financial services provider. It's the, uh, it delivers on these promises because only Brand X has these and that puts a factual support. So it should, without knowing what Brand X is, you ought to be able to do this. This is, not, this is one that you should know this. Is. Especially for athletes who are serious about their sports. Brand X is the replenishment drink that keeps your thirst quenched during strenuous exercise because it has a unique blend of fluid electrolytes and carbohydrates and because successful professional athletes like Michael Jordan and Peyton Manning, what is it? Of course it is, right? They don't sell to Michael Jordan and Peyton Manning. Those guys get it for free. They sell to my 10-year-old kid and his baseball team. They aren't trying to be, 
They didn't say, especially for athletes and, and mothers who want their kids to stay healthy and these people and guys who want to look good at the gym. And No, they sell based on this and it's, it's it, that's, but that's their brand position, clearly. Here's one more, especially for people who want to help other families cope with disasters. Brand X is the first responder to natural disasters. It brings food, water, shelter to disaster victims. Because only Brand X operates in every U.S. state and worldwide with the cooperation of 144 governments. Right. Uh, yes, right? That's a position statement for, don't, for donors. Right? Um, so you got to have that. Remember, we're talking about this. What do you need for the strategic plan? Defi define your brand position. If you need somebody outside, shameless plug, get somebody from <laughs> far enough away from the trees to see the forest to help you with that. Um, also, figure out how and what you're going to measure because eventually somebody's going to say to you, how are we doing with that social media stuff? So you got to figure out what to measure. Um, and Mike and I think this is a decent, it may be different for you, but this is sort of what, this is that same study that Forrester study of all the business. They're asking, what do they measure here? And, 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 and it's ranked basically going this way on down here being not at all effective to measure, and this is very effective. So remember I said that it can help that your search engine ranking? They measure that. How do our search engine rankings? How often do we come up for our keywords, or whatever our keyword strategy is, um, in, the, in the top two pages of the top page probably of Google um, And then they'll measure, they'll use Google Analytics and look at measurement to number of hits, unique visitors. Um, you know, they'll sometimes do some traditional um, research to find out, listen, do women 44 to 54 know that we even are on Twitter? You know, that takes traditional research to look that of, of all their customers that people know. Um, this is blog search engine. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah. Okay. Um, so we can get you copied this anyway, but you need to figure out what you want to measure. Don't try to measure too much. Don't iterate. Measure, say that's not really giving us value, measure something else. And there's some tools that Michael talked about, about some tools you can use if you're not already on your website. You don't measure these things. Okay, so you're in. There's some rules. This will get to Cindy's question too. The first rule is that you don't own the community that you're creating. And you're creating a community. If you decide to be in LinkedIn, and Facebook and Twitter, and you're going to interconnect all those. They're going to reference each other. When you post to Facebook, you can post to Twitter at the same time, vice versa. There's some tools you can use for that. Mike, you're the tool kit guy. So. Mm -hmm. But the, the deal is that you don't own the community. The community owns the community. Okay? A company starts it, owns the infrastructure for it. It's your profile. It's your page they're linking back to. It's your blog on your site. You facilitate the discussions, and you moderate, and you keep people in check. Now, that's different from ignoring or deleting negative comments. That means, you know, there may be some stuff that is literally inappropriate. There may be somebody spamming you, or there may be somebody who posts a porn image or something like that. But that's got to come off. But, you, but what you don't want to do is you can moderate the discussion, but you need to be, you need to deal with complaints the same way you deal with complaints when someone calls you on the phone and complains the popcorn is stale. You say, well, you, did. you know what, I'm sorry about that. We're going we're gonna to work into this. This is what we're going to do about it. And by the way, for the next three times you come to a show at the Colonial, your popcorn is on the house. Right? That's how you deal with it. For good types of service, do the same thing in your social networks. Do it publicly, and people will go, those guys are cool. I think I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here. The deal here is that if you don't play nice with the community, they're going to still talk about you. Remember what Jeff Bezos said, but they're going to go somewhere else and talk about you. They're not going to play in your room. You're not being very nice to them, right? It's about people. You know, you want to focus on the individuals, that one little person that you're dealing with who could then be your evangelist. And you participate as a person, not as a corporate entity. Use language like you were writing to your mom, polite. <laughs> but, but we're writing to a good friend. That's how this sort of started. Good friend. Be funny. Be human. Be be the, the cool person you are at a cocktail party. Because just like at a cocktail party, 
people can smell the BSers from across the room and they will stay away from them. They like the people who are real and true to what they believe in. Right? You believe in your brand and your service. Be real. Be sincere. Sincerity equals believability, which equals credibility. And it's not about you. It's about the conversation. It's about the sort of fun of it, which is by definition a two-way thing. So be part of the community, but don't try to control it. Does that make sense? Things that make some some things that yeah. Same. Just a follow up using Mike's example of the Keen Honda experience. Let's say let's say he had a bad Keen Honda experience, and all of a sudden Mike posts this this comment. So and so, I was really disappointed in the service. Blah 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 blah. All of a sudden, there's 200 friends that get this message. Now Keen Honda's left only the bad. What to do with that? As you said, the community owns the community. Don't try to control the community, but how do you refrain or how do you pull back? Well, you don't have to pull back. If those 200 people who said, yeah, they're bad, they're bad, they're bad, if, if he replies right away to that, he's, he's using a reputation monitoring, monitoring tool. Make sure Mike gives you that one. <laughs> and he knows that it's there, and uh, he replies to that, and replies to Mike, those same 200 people are going to see that comment in the way he did. And if somebody else, those replies, might be, yeah, that's too bad, those guys stink. He's got to reply to, the, to Mike, because Mike had the bad experience. And the, and, and the fact that I wrote, those guys stink, I'm going to see that reply. And I'm going to say, because I'm going to get a, on Facebook at least, which is where this was posted, I'm going to get noticed that somebody else commented on this post. So I'm going to go to it. If I, if I care enough that I would care to spread the bad word, I would go to it and see how they responded. Keen Honda responded to Mike's Whoa, I remember Mike complained about that, and I commented, let's see what Keen Honda said. And if you dealt with it right, in a human and, and correct way, then then I'm going to all of a sudden feel pretty good about Keen Honda. This is, this is national, this is not uh, the Trenton <coughs> this is This is Honda's national fan page for the Odyssey. I mean, there are comments up there. There are some, some comments that the uh, national Honda should be uh, responding to. I did it when I was like, Looking this up last night or over the last couple of days, um, you know, notice, you know, that they probably they need to have someone responding to some of these. Uh, that, you know, there's certainly enough. I think there's enough positive to sort of outweigh. Everyone's got some some uh, tough tough issues now and then with, with any product, but um, they should. They, in this case, uh, it's an example of someone who should be up here probably posting, um, saying, "Sorry, you have this bad experience. What was your dealer? Let me get in touch with them so they can reach out." To but the other, and the other thing is that it's not people who use social media, and almost everybody does, understand the nature of it, that it is a soapbox. And so it's not the same as, wow, this guy took out a paid ad in the Keen Sentinel to complain about the kitchen store service. It's not 60 minutes. It's not the same. I, so I don't, when I see somebody complaining that the kitchen store whatever, I don't know, I tripped over the dog on the way. <laughs> it's not, I get that that is okay for this guy to be on a soapbox, and I don't necessarily take it as, as negative. However, there is, if you don't deal with it well, and you, and you are not getting um, uh, um, the service you expect through traditional customer service channels, there, the web is complete with uh, examples of how it can hurt you. Everybody, anybody know United Broke My Guitar? Anybody not see anything? Want to see it? You break. You break. We'll get it in break. Maybe. We'll get it in break. This guy, uh, this uh, guy, amateur, I don't know, singer, country western singer, his guitar got busted, and he produced this YouTube video about it that was funny, cute, simple. He sang a song about the United Broke My Guitar. It was entertaining, and it went viral, and it was bad for United Maggot Chandlers. <laughs> And they did not deal with it well. And now the guy sells the thing on iTunes and everything. I mean, he's made like a cottage industry out of it now. We'll play it at the break because it's really, it's actually kind of fun, but it's also a great customer service story. That was number nine on the top ten wonders yeah. in social marketing. There's an article out there about it. Deal with it. If you don't deal with it, if you try to hide it, it's, they're going to talk it. And you say there are ways that, that the company can't know this mm -hmm. because, I mean, my first thought, and in my limited knowledge, my first thought is unless someone at Key Honda is a friend of Mike's who would have gotten this message, 
how would how would you kind of handle that? There's, there's some, I mean, we'll, we'll get into a little bit when we talk about individual channels have different pros and cons to them, an easier way to search, but there are some um, there are some simple tools to, to do some searching and monitoring. There's big expensive tools to do the same thing um, as well, but there are some ways. They can't deal with it unless they know about right. it. Right. So how do they know about it? You search for it. Well, how do you know if people are complaining about the popcorn now at home over <coughs> somewhere on the phone? You don't, right? Here, you can at least search on using or have Google alerts to talk about going to the theater or uh, something yeah. more important, more expensive. Parts, I, Potentially by having you know by having a page up there where you're given this the honeypot approach of let's give them a place to complain, then we know about it as well. So so by having if, if, if your organization had a, a spot on Facebook, um, at least it sort of gives them a target for their right. frustration. Right. Let's go. How often is the poison pill purposely put on a blog? For example, Mike Mike is not it was just terrific, but is Lexus going to see that and? <laughs> which is the other cop rated and say, I own a Honda and it stinks and I'm only going to buy a Lexus. I don't know how often, but there we got to find out who's the bad guy. Who's the bad guy if I can find it? That's actually one of the rules here. Um, let me jump through these. Um, you know, you want to be engaged in the community. You don't just put it up and, what's the phrase, post it? And, post and forget. Uh, yeah, post and forget. you got to be engaged. Uh, you can you can talk about that later with the you want to encourage new members. Somebody else, if somebody joins the conversation, welcome them. You know, make it easy for pe people to participate. Use the, the channels they. That's why we're focused on the main channels here. Use the channels they're used to participating in. Um, integrate all your sites. Make sure that they feed each other. That you talk about it, link to each other, and your main site as well. What else did I say? One thing that makes a community work is a company that listens to both good and bad. You're not always going to agree people will that. Get that. We respect your opinion, but unfortunately we can't do it. Be honest with people. That, that's the bottom line. And then respond to criticism. Never delete negative comments because it will come back to bite you. What won't work is when you just give it lip service. When you use your social media to do nothing but push marketing messages. you got to give away some of your product, some of your knowledge, some of your expertise, some of your sources for that. Just little tidbits in the same way we're doing that today, kind of, right? Um, and the, the video we showed at the beginning was, uh, you know, something we didn't put that together or something. A great, great video we found it on uh, YouTube and, and showed that today to introduce the, the show. I think that's the other big challenge for, for business. We, we bought, I think we all learned to be successful by, by, by being experts at what we do and, and keeping that information to ourselves and, and selling it essentially as a part of. Part of the changes that I think that are happening in the business world are we need to give this away to have it come back to us. Right. It won't work when your company's policies become the closed door that don't let you collaborate. Well, we can't do that because of our policy that people won't buy that. No, any more than they buy it if you say that on the phone, right? Uh, and it won't work if you are if you neglect this big noise. Sounds like Honda's or maybe there's enough comments that they're just not yet gotten to it yet. Um, there are some manners, though, and one of the big manners is do not participate on competitors' sites. Mo monitor them, see what they're doing, learn from them, but do not participate because people will see it and they will, wait, if you get found out, that's bad. I mean, just, just to be like tapping their, their customer service phone. Um, and, and somebody will find out. Then that'll become the next viral thing. And the other thing is, as I said before, don't participate in just in pimp your product. Participate because you want to learn and interact and build relationships with your consumers or your donors. And you know, don't even mention your products in every post. Do it if you got something cool or proud or something special going on. But talk about the industry and get your products. Started. You know, it's it's really sort of it's it's have fun. It's engage. It's be polite. It's play nice. Be social. You know? And then you'll have success in this channel, right? And because there's two ways you can go with this, and that is sort of up the channel to loyalty, positive interactions, consistency about your message, knowing that brand position, credibility, which leads to authenticity, authenticity, trust, loyalty, or you know where else you can go. You have negative interactions. You're inconsistent. You say that doesn't jive with what I read before. You're you, they distrust you. You disloyalty, and that can spread like wildfire. Uh, lastly, in this section, 
when you do this, Mike? Yeah, uh, we'll talk a little bit about it uh, in, in, as we get into the channels, but uh, you got to promote it, you got to let folks know about the channels you're in. Um, it, uh, I hope you'll pick up a business card on the way out. You know, we added uh, on our Lucidus business cards, I got my LinkedIn profile, I got my Twitter account. Uh, all that stuff we, oh yeah, we got an email, you know, back to, to email introduction. We, we better put our email addresses on our business cards. Start uh, thinking about putting your LinkedIn account on your business cards, your companies, Facebook on, on uh, business cards. If you're a retail business, you know, Facebook page, you know, a, a placard at the, at the checkout, fan us on Facebook. Um, just, you know, be thinking about all those things that we learned with web stuff first came out, putting our, our URL everywhere. Ways to, there's ways to promote that both offline, on your website. Um, you know, people, you, I'm sure you've seen people starting to uh, include that how they're involved in social networks on their websites. Um, and there's some other interesting things that we'll show in more of the demo section. Even in traditional media, I'm working with a, uh, just something that came to mind this week, we're working with a small financial services provider down in sort of Wilton, Connecticut area, uh, investment management firm, small. Um, and. Uh, they're running ads still. Should we stop running ads? No. We should run, um, instead of a half page ad in Wilton Magazine four times a year, let's run eight, eight page ads with compelling headlines that are, that are like shocking things. Like your investment manager, um, you think you get value from your investment man manager, I don't know, what, some big headline that says, find out why, bang, when you can links to links to the Facebook page, the Facebook fan page, where you can really talk about it. You don't have to run the big ad, but, but promote it. Promote that you're on there. Promote that discussion, essentially. Okay? Okay. I don't know where we are on time. I think we're pretty good right now. Let's we kind of fire, fire up those cell phones. Let's take a 10-minute break, get some coffee, and we'll put it back. We'll